welcome to If It Floats. I'm your host, Andy Crawford, and this is a Conk Republic Boat Show. We're going to be bringing you big boats, little boats, good, the bad, and the ugly of boats. We're going to be bringing you Cuban boats. We call them the Freedom Boats. Those things barely stay afloat, but we'll be bringing them to you. We'll be going over to the Coast Guard Station and visiting over there. We'll be going to docks, piers, marinas, wherever there's a boat, we're going to go there. We hope you enjoy the show. Now let's go take a look at our boats here at 3D Marina in uh, Key West. Oh, Pete! Pete! Right here, Andy. Hey, man, how are you? Not too bad, how are you? Hey, right. Right. Hi, we're here in the wheelhouse of the Marmont, a 96-foot wooden hulled boat with Pete Zielinski, the project uh, marine engineer. Pete, could you give me a brief history of the Marmont? Sure. The Marmont was built in 1936 by American Car and Foundry for the DuPont family. She only was owned by the DuPont family till 1941 when the government took her away for World War II using a service to, to guard the east coast of America. Does this mean that the uh, ship actually had guns and armament on it? Sure did. They tell me that she had machine guns and depth charges and also had a hand in sinking a German submarine during the war. Oh, so she's got an illustrious uh, background then. She has quite a background. After the war, she was sold at auction to uh, the highest bidder and has, since 1948, have been in private service as a yacht. I got her back in 97 for Christmas. She was sunk at the dock, and the owner of the marina said, if you raise her, you can have her. So what was that process like? That was a long, arduous process. We took a long time, but we tried to make sure that we raised her up so she would stay afloat until we could get her out of the water to replace the bottom. Right now, we're currently seeking a marina that will be able to help us out with our project a long term, almost a year to a year and a half, to have her out of the water and replace at least 90 of her 200 ribs, and then put new mahogany planking on the bottom. She's double planked with mahogany right now. We need to replace all that from just above the water line to the keel. I see there's a lot of water coming off through the, the, the pumps on board. Is there? she taking on an awful lot of water while we're sitting here? She takes on water every minute of every day, never sleeps. Those leaks, they just never sleep. Well, that's the whole idea of the show is to keep it afloat. That's it. And she's still afloat, and hopefully we'll keep her afloat until it's time to take her out of the water and properly redo the bottom. Well, that sounds like a good idea. Now, we have two other boats that are going to be in the series this year that we're working on. Uh, we have a 24-foot uh, open fishing boat that we're going to be pulling out for. What are we going to be doing to her? We're going to be doing a periodic maintenance to the 24-foot open fisherman. We're going to clean her up, check out all her electrical, re go through the bilge pump wiring, and give the engine a tune-up. But finally, we'll put some bottom paint on her and put her back in the water for hopefully another year of untroubled service. Okay, what about the little duck we have right here, the uh, little 22-foot two, westerly? What are we going to be doing to, that, to her this year? The 22-foot westerly is also going to get a total refit. We're going to do everything from her sails and standing rigging through into the electrical and motor, and we're going to do some plumbing on that as well. We're going to finish her up with a bottom paint and a new outside top coat. Excellent. So why don't you take us on a tour of the uh, Marmont? Okay, let's go. All right. Okay. And here we are down in the cruise lounge area, which this was originally, when the boat was built, would have been three separate rooms. A room that would have come right out about like this way here, and there would have been a engineers or a, a uh, first mate's quarters over here on this side of this large room would have been another smaller room right here that would have been a bathroom and then right behind me would have been a large room right here for an engineers quarters all the load bearing walls have been taken out and all we have left are the poles that i put back in to try to support it while we're doing this until we get it out of the water we can't really do anything to correct the problems that we have because just like our house, the first thing you have to do is your foundation. So we have to set the keel straight again before we start installing any of the new walls. And here we are in the engine room of the old Marmot. 
you can see some more of the, the problems caused by taking out the load-bearing walls. If we look over here on the starboard side, you can see the separation between that hull and bulkhead joint is almost six inches. The problems that have occurred are basically because they've taken out part of the structural walls in the boat and it's making her fall down upon herself. What we're going to have to do is replace all the planks and several of the ribs in the boat to try to make her back to as close to original as we can before we start to use it as a museum. And here we come into the galley of the old Marmot. This is one of the rooms that survived the sinking almost as well as the captain's cabin did. So we're not really going to do much repair in this room right from the onset of the project. Mostly what we're going to continue doing is the bottom of the boat and the repair of the staterooms down below trying to bring the structure back into the boat that she's missing so she won't fall apart any more than she is. Let's go downstairs and I'll show you just what I mean. And here we have one of the guest staterooms back aft. This is our after section of the boat which has its own bilge. The forward section has a bilge and the after section has a bilge here. As you can see we have quite a trout stream running down in the bilge and this water runs continuously. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day. It never takes a rest and never has a holiday. So we're always pumping it. I have three stages of pumps that I use here. A primary pump, which you can hear in the background going on and off periodically. There's an AC pump, which comes on every three minutes in case the water should come up too high too quickly. And then there's also another backup DC pump. If our power goes off, we still have enough DC pumping power through batteries to go for at least 24 hours before we would have to recharge the batteries. Now on the way down the hall here you can see another area. Now back aft here is the master stateroom and this is another problem area in the boat in that this used to also be like in the crew lounge area there was one smaller bathroom area on this corner of this room. Back on this corner of the room was another stateroom with a small hallway that came down here into what would have been the master stateroom across the back. But these guys wanted to make a bigger room, so they just knocked out all the walls, and that is actually making the back end of the boat kind of fall off, and like the front end of the boat is kind of trying to fall off. If I get the boat back on land and make the keel straight again, then I can rebuild all these walls back in here, put in my new wood, and she'll be just as good as new. Now we can come on up to the main salon. And here we come up into the salon. This is one of the original largest rooms of the yacht, but she was built this way intentionally to be able to have a, a several people in here uh, at one time. The windows in the Marmot being made in 1936 roll up and down. This is something that you don't ever really find anymore in a new type of yacht of any sort. It's just too much work. They have air conditioning now so nobody really needs a window that would roll up and down. Over in the corner over there on the starboard side I have a picture of what the Marmot used to look like in the salon originally and we're hoping to get her to look almost exactly like that when we're done with the project. As some of you might have noticed there's no ceiling in here that was taken out after the boat was sunk just to clean everything up underneath the ceiling area and we don't really want to put a new one in until we get the keel straightened back out. That's one of the main reasons she's in the shape that she's in because we can't really do much of the